pals, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you everything that I use in my desk setup and how I've created a clean and minimal space that allows me to stay at my most productive. A lot has changed since my last setup video back in 2020. At this point, most people have started to return to their normal place of work. However, I've actually become self-employed in the last 12 months. So the majority of my working day is now spent in my home office. In light of this, I've spent a lot of time exploring ways to best optimize the space in order to create the perfect balance between productivity and comfort. Starting with the desk itself, I've stuck with the classic approach of using an IKEA kitchen worktop and recently switched from a dark grey Ek Bakken unit to a less moody and brighter version with a concrete effect. I really like the size of these worktops, they're quite long and narrow, but that works really well with the shape of the room, which is only a couple of meters across. The standing desk frame was gifted to me by a company called FlexiSpot. It's pretty good and I've got no real complaints. I think if I had paid for it though, I probably would have gone for something a bit more sturdy because there is a notable amount of wobble, especially when it's elevated to a standing position. But it's a pretty good budget option and I think most people would be pretty happy with it. On my last setup, the desk was supported by two IKEA cabinets, which meant I had lots of places to keep things tidied away. Obviously losing that storage wasn't ideal, so I tried a few different solutions, but my favorite option so far is this desk drawer unit that I found on Amazon, which I've just drilled into the bottom of the desk. It's not the most premium product, but it does the job and provides me with a nice bit of extra space for hard drives and other things that I need regular access to. It also has this handy shelf where I keep my MacBook and audio interface, so they're off the desk, which is really helpful when I need a bit more space to work or if I wanna maintain that really clean aesthetic. Moving on to the tech side of things, it makes sense to start with the computer that drives everything. I'm using a 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, which has 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. I've been really impressed with this laptop over the last few months. I didn't think it would be a huge upgrade from my Intel based MacBook from 2018, but the performance gain has been significant and I can now run CPU and GPU intensive tasks without needing any workarounds like proxies or working off an SSD. It's really impressive and I genuinely think it's the perfect MacBook for my needs. I've always favored the smaller form factor, so the fact that it now has the same specs as the 16 inch version is excellent and I have no hesitations with recommending this laptop. One of my favorite things about the MacBook is the fact that it still uses USB-C for power and data transfer. I was a little bit worried when Apple announced the return of MagSafe because I'd gotten so used to working around a Thunderbolt connection but fortunately, this is still an option and I'm able to continue using a single cable for everything. That takes us nicely to the monitor in my setup, which is the 32 inch LG Ergo, also known as the LG 32880W, which is the official product name. This is a 4K IPS panel, which actually comes with the articulating monitor arm included. Not only does this provide brilliant flexibility for the monitor's tilt angle and pivot orientation, but it also has a really clever cable management design, which hides all of the power and input leads inside the arm itself, helping to maintain that clutter-free and minimal aesthetic. I think that this monitor is a really great option for creatives who also want a panel for consuming content. It runs at a very average 60 frames per second, but it does provide 95% coverage of the DCI-P3 color gamut and 32 inches is the sweet spot for a 4K panel in my opinion. The pixel density is more than enough and it just gives you so much extra room when editing in Final Cut Pro or Lightroom for example and it doesn't feel like it's too big on the desk. I have my PS5 connected for when I'm in the mood for some gaming and I've also added three Philips Hue play bars to give the screen ambient lighting when I'm working in the evenings or if I just want to add a bit of flavor to the room. In terms of audio, I've currently got a pair of Razer Nomo speakers, which I only really got because I thought they looked cool and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. Usually when I'm editing and I need something with a bit more fidelity, I'll use my Sony headphones, which are pretty good, but I definitely could use something a bit more premium in future. Also on the desk is the Rode PodMic, which I use for all of my voiceovers and for the Nothing Ventured podcast, where I talk about all things related to content creation and running a small business. If you want to watch or listen, I provided links in the description to all of the platforms it can be found on, along with all of the products that I've talked about today. The pod mic is connected to the PSA One Plus, which is Rode's latest microphone arm. Its movements are really smooth and doesn't really make any noise, which is good because you don't want to be picking that up on any of your recordings. And it does a really good job of minimizing noise from the desk itself. So I'll either connect this microphone to my laptop via the Rode A1 interface or directly into camera using the Sony XLR K3M, depending on what sort of project that I'm working on. 
I'll probably make a video on all the gear that I use to create content at some point. So if this is something that you might be interested in watching, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Next, we move on to accessories. These are just all the extra bits on and around the desk, which help me in my day to day or add a bit of substance and character to the room. I've used a fair few mouse and keyboard combinations over the years. And while Apple's Magic Series definitely aren't perfect, they're just much more reliable than anything else I've used with the MacBook. And I find that I keep coming back to them. They're usually sitting on this matte black desk pad from OrbitKey, which I really like. It has some really nice features like a cable tidy and a space for all of your papers. But what it really needs are some rubber feet or something because it slides around a lot. And I find that a bit annoying because I like it to be perfectly aligned with the monitor. So I'm looking forward to when they eventually release a second version. My charging device of choice is the Base Station Pro from Nomad with the inbuilt Apple Watch charger. The black leather pairs really nicely with the desk pad, and I love how sleek the overall design of this product is. There's three charging cores inside, which gives you a few options when it comes to placement, but occasionally it can be a little bit difficult to get the device to actually align with these. I understand that Nomads are integrating MagSafe into their future chargers, however, which should solve the problem. On the walls above my desk, I have a couple of picture shelves from Ikea, which are one of the only surviving parts of my old setup. This is where I keep extra camera lenses along with a hanging plant and other decorations to help style the room. While I really enjoy the minimalist look, there is sometimes a risk of everything just looking a little bit clinical. So I try to change this up every once in a while to figure out what works. Finally, we finish with the most important part of the entire setup, which is my chair. I'm still using the Jaff Jallet chair from Ikea, which is going strong and has no obvious signs of discoloring or creaking or anything like that. I like it a lot, and I think that mesh back is still the way to go as it keeps you cool, comfortable, and supported year round. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of my desk setup. I'm sure there are a few things that people would do differently, but this is the setup that I've really been enjoying this year. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. I've got a few YouTube videos coming out very soon, so I'm looking forward to sharing those. And I also post a lot of tech-related content over on my Instagram, so I recommend finding me there if you haven't done so already. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.